This is GABNET, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble, we go until midnight tonight, from the East Coast to the United States, from Harlem in New York, yes, hello everybody, hey, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a Wednesday, and we uh, go for our three-day marathon here of doing uh, new programs, you know, we do four shows a week, the other one that we do is on uh, Mondays at uh, 4 o'clock Eastern, and it's on uh, Facebook. It's not here on uh, YouTube where a lot of you are watching us right now. But as with our first day of the week usually that we're on, which is Wednesday, uh, we go to an old friend. We bring an old friend onto the program, uh, and uh, here we go with him. Uh, as soon as I see him, his little picture in here, uh, We'll, uh, uh, let's see here. Okay, there we go. Uh, he's hey. uh, he's uh, he's there in, uh, let's see here, in Versailles. There he is, folks, yeah. right there. The Hall of Mirrors. The Hall of Mirrors, right. Yeah, that makes you look, uh, you would like that because Trump would, that's the way Trump would do his home. Exactly. Matter of fact, if uh, Trump had his way, he'd turn this into a hotel and he'd live in this section of the uh, yeah, palace. Yeah, but he can't afford it, so he can't afford anything, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he may be president again. Hey, uh, before we get into I, that I, I uh, don't discussion. Think I don't think he's going to be president, but anyway. <laughs> I don't either. But before we get into that discussion... Uh, I just want to offer my condolences on your friend Gilbert Gottfried. I uh, watched the video that you posted of uh, the interview with him on the Great American Broadcast, and it was an excellent interview. There's also a, there's also an audio up as well on our on demand of a interview that I did with him at uh, Sirius XM. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you know what the uh, ailment was? Uh, you know, uh, it, it was supposedly. It's hard to explain, but it was a a, 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 a tachycardia, rhythmic tachycardia, or something, caused by a form of muscular dystrophy. It's a, huh? a arterial dystrophy or something like that. Yeah, uh, and that he's had it for quite a while. He's had a bum. He's had a bum ticker for a while. Yeah. And, you know, I, I noticed during the interview that he did with you in the studio that you uh, took right after Sirius mm -hmm. for the Great American Broadcast, uh, I, was it a hot studio where the lights were hot? Because you weren't sweating. No, but they weren't. he was oh, profusely. Really? It wasn't hot at all. That yeah, studio. he uh, he looked like uh, he was uh, just walked out of a Schritz. Well, he may have come in from outdoors, and I, I can't remember what date that was done on, but it might have been a hot day outside. Yeah, he, and then when he, he said he was in. thirsty, but he he was yeah. uh, he was sweaty yeah. and uh, yeah. he didn't look that good, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, uh, he never ever looked that good, you know. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. It was uh, 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 to begin with. He didn't die on Monday, as most people think. From what I understand, he was buried on Saturday. So that would have meant that he died on Thursday? Maybe on Thursday or Friday, you know, because Jews like to bury their dead within 24 hours, although they don't usually do it on a Saturday. But somebody said they read that he was actually buried by a priest in a Jewish cemetery. It's, really? It's, I don't know. We haven't gotten all the, all the information yet. Yeah. But, uh, uh, and I don't want to, you know, I, who cares? He's dead, you know. Yeah, uh, and uh, it it was, I think, it was a shock to me. I didn't know the man was even ill. I hadn't I hadn't seen he, uh, our contact with each other, Gilbert and mine, mm -hmm. was once a year uh, at our friend J M Mark Garland's home when he used to have a, a little New Year's get together, either on New Year's Eve or a couple of days before. Yeah. 
and uh and, and he'd always show up and then he and i would just go over into a corner and talk all night with each other well because you know, he enjoyed me and i enjoyed him you know the interview seemed like two good friends getting together you were very comfortable and so was he and i you know i haven't seen other interviews with him but i would imagine he doesn't get interviewed like that very often well i didn't i didn't interview him that often okay to be honest yeah. with you I mean, uh, basically, he was Howard Slut, you know. He oh. would come in to do Howard's show. Okay. Uh, and, and he and Howard had a long relationship. But the funny part about it was that, that our relationship was more social over the yeah. last couple of years than it was on the air. Uh, and, I mean, I loved, I looked forward to these parties every year because I knew Gilbert would be there. And I knew that we could talk to each other and spend hours actually talking to each other and uh, just a sweet decent guy and you know and his wife uh, Dara uh, was also a wonderful person I mean she took she turned his life around the the when I first met let's see when I first met Gilbert was in San Francisco mm -hmm. uh, the first time I ever saw him was years before that at Catch a Rising Star but then I saw him, you know, he came to San Francisco on occasion and I'd have him on the show. And I got to know him doing that. In fact, we did some a show at the, uh, what, what's the uh, opera house in San Francisco? Uh, the, oh, uh, uh, the, not uh, the War Memorial Opera House. Uh, well, anyway, the, it, we did a show in, in the Civic Center for some kind of, I can't even remember the... Um, it was for some the Marines Opera House, or it's, it's I don't know, I can't remember now. On California, but, but, it, but it was a, it was a show, and it was a uh, to raise money. It was a yeah. fundraiser, and um, at that point we got to really know each other because we're sitting backstage, you know, and we're talking to each other. And blah, blah blah blah. Then yeah. we we over the years he would do my show in San Francisco, and then I got to know him when I came back to New York. Uh, through uh, a couple of friends uh, that would do things socially, and I would be there with them socially. And that's Penn yeah. Gillette, and also this friend Mark Garland, who had w one time been uh, Penn and Teller's uh, stage manager. And um, one of the most Mark Garland. That's not the guy that uh, played uh, the mm -hmm. agent. No, no, on, no, no, uh, no, no. That's Jeff Garland. Jeff Garland. Okay. Yeah, no, no. Mark Garland uh, is a uh, is a very talented guy, and he he does a lot of television work. He's he's a he's a, a, a so assistant director. When you see assistant director, he usually is the his job has always been the assistant director. Anyway, so uh, I uh, but one of the greatest moments comedically in my life that I've ever had is that one afternoon we were invited to, and I'm trying to remember the name of the hotel. It's a famous hotel here. Uh, huh? Ritz? No, uh, Ritz. No, no, not the, there isn't a Ritz in New York. Uh, no, uh, there's, um, is it Four Seasons? No, no, no. Uh, but, 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 I'll, I, I'm trying to remember it. I've been trying to remember it all day and I couldn't. But What's it's the one on the park that Trump no, owned? No this, is, no, this is, no, this is nothing that Trump owned. He still doesn't. It's still there, and uh, it, they we have they have high tea every day at about four o'clock. So Penn Gillette said, "Let's all go have high tea." So we all head over to have high tea, and and Gilbert is there, and we're sitting around this very fancy, ornate, um, tea room in the hotel, and they start bringing us all the stuff they do for high tea. You know, the, all the different teas and. And the cookies, you know, then the, the mm -hmm. uh, you know, the little. Yeah, I had a high tea whatever. in London. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't yeah. remember the name of the hotel. But anyway. Uh, the Dorchester. The Dorchester. I stayed there. Yeah. I stayed there uh, when I was. Yeah, they got those really high beds with the uh, bedpan warmers under them. Yeah, but I, I stayed there years ago uh, when I. Uh, uh, I stayed there when I uh, uh, went over for the uh, Paul is Dead deal. That was oh, the yeah. hotel I stayed at, the Dorchester. No, wait, no, wait a minute. Yes. Was it the Do yeah, it was the Dorchester. Dorchester was a nice hotel. Yeah. and Or maybe it was the Dorchester I stayed at when I was at the uh, U.S. Embassy riots. 
I can't remember. Well, anyway, the yeah, po- that's back. the back to the story. So yeah. um, we're all sitting there doing high tea with the little you know cookies and the tea and the whole thing, and all of a sudden, Penn and Gilbert decide to start having a contest between each other as to who can tell the dirtiest joke. And for a solid hour and a half, these guys went back and forth with each other, yes. telling some of the most filthy jokes you've ever heard in your life. And and we're, IT. and we're there in this very fancy hotel, in this very ornate tea room, having high tea. And Did people I, overhear you? Um, I don't. There weren't very many people in the room, but they. Some of them were listening, and they yeah. were getting a good kick out of it. Nobody was asking them to stop. Yeah. But I mean, it was really filthy stuff. I mean, uh, no, the aristocrats joke didn't come up, but Penn yeah. Gillette told his bear joke, which is kind of another one of those opuses joke, opus joke telling stories. You know, goes on and on about filthy things. And it was just, it was the most hilarious hour and a half I've ever spent anywhere. And I remember that distinctly. And, and uh, uh, I can't tell you how brilliant I always found uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, and he was just a very, very funny guy. Yeah. And on top of that, he met this woman, he, was, he had been living how could I say how he lived? He, he just, you know, he had an apartment and it was like, uh, have you ever seen Hoarders? Yeah. His yeah. place, you suppose, up, up I hadn't seen room. it, but he kind of lived that kind of lifestyle. And everybody figured, hey, you know, here's, here's, here's Gilbert. He's 50 years old almost. We don't ever say he's going to get married, you know. Meanwhile, into our crowd, like on movie night, comes this woman, uh, named Dara Kravitz. And Dara is a woman that every guy in the room lusted after because she was, not because she was sexy, but because she was sexy by virtue of how smart and sharp and keen she was. And everybody wanted to date her. And somehow, the guy she started dating, the guy she wanted to date, was Gilbert. And this was, w- this was in what was uh, Gilbert Gottfried always in character or no, did he have no no moments no, where no no when you were when he wasn't on stage he was Gilbert Gottfried the person you know but he 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 was he was still a strange human being okay yeah. you know hoarder stuff like that and he meets this woman and they go out on a date and she falls in love with him and he I guess falls in love with her and all of a sudden one day we hear Gilbert's getting married well that proves that love is blind no not that love is blind I mean I think that she felt she had gotten a real catch and I think everybody kind of agreed that there was something under the surface of 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 Gilbert that had to be tapped yeah. that she somehow found. And they had a very successful marriage. They had two children. They were married for 17 years before he died. Uh, mm. Very successful marriage. And it would have gone on, you know, till he was 90 because it was just, the, she so loved this guy and adored wow. him. You could just see it in her eyes whenever she was near him. And, and uh, then they had the children, and that was wonderful because he had a chance to become a father, and I, I'm told he was a terrific father, you know, a very loving father, and the kids adored him. And that's really who I mourn for now more than Gilbert. Yeah. Gilbert's gone. I know. I lost my dad when I was 17. That was very, very tough. Well, these kids I felt are, ripped off. These kids are yeah. a little younger than that. I think they're maybe, I, I don't know how old they are exactly, but I'd say maybe at least around 12, 13, something That's like that. That's a very, very you tough know. age. And, and I'm sure they just absolutely adored the man, and it's got to be devastating to them. Uh, yeah. And it's devastating, I'm sure, to her as well but only to a lesser extent in that I think this has been going on for quite a while. 
the situation was something that they knew was inevitable, okay? Mm -hmm. And so in a way, she could get herself prepared for it. But you never prepared. But you never prepared for it. But uh, although I saw a situation the other day, I went to a, a, a what do you call it? A, a, um, a, a chick, a shiks. Shiva. Shiva. Shiks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a sl- <laughs> some shiks is what we lost after. There, there were shiks. Shivas is there. what we do when they're dead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I went to a shiva, and and in that case, the, the guy had been dying for like several years now, and they knew this ultimately would be the ending, okay? Uh, and so when he finally died, I think his wife has been so relieved because the years of him suffering and her having to deal with it. Oh, it's very know, difficult on uh, Great survivors. sigh of relief. But in, yeah. in this case, I think Dara had a little more concept of it, but I'm sure she is an absolute, uh, at an absolute loss because she, I, the way she so dearly loved this man yeah. You know, was what was so impressive to me, and so impressive to me about both of them, and uh, you know, I, I miss him, already. You know, and I haven't seen him in maybe two or three years because those parties we stopped having. He didn't go to one year, and then the next year we had COVID, and then we had that for about two years, so there wasn't another chance for him to go to one of these parties that we would go to every year. Um, but I still, I still miss him because I, I, he was always, in some ways, he was always a presence in my life. Uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's hard to explain, you know. Yeah. But when I heard yesterday that he had died, I went, wow. And then we called some people we knew who knew them very well and said, you know, where can we get a hold of Dara because we want an address on her so we could write her. And they said, I didn't know Gilbert died. You know, a lot of people didn't know he had this. Okay, yeah. uh, my friend Mark Garland did, but he didn't think it was getting bad, and he hadn't heard about it. I was the first one to tell him that, you know, he had I, died. I, somebody told me, and I wrote you uh, just to tell you and to give you my condolences. I don't know uh, if I were the, was the bearer. Of bad you know, news. I wonder if I should get condolences. People do that. When you have somebody well, that was, yeah, he's, he was your friend. You could yeah. you could see that. I didn't know how close you guys were until I saw that interview and I saw the uh, the communications between the two of you and uh, you know how how comfortable you were with one another. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, it, it, you know, uh, uh, so I you know I just uh, it it really hit me pretty hard. Because, I mean, the guy was too young to die. He was 67. 67. You know. He's my age. Now, what was interesting is that for the many, many years now, the one thing between us that we had in common mm-hmm. was when I would say, when he would suddenly burst out, I'd be like, I'd be walking down the street, okay? Yeah. He'd be cute. walking down the other side of the street. He would spot me. And at the top of his lungs, yell out, well, I'll let you hear what he used to yell out. Yeah. Alex Bennett is still alive? <laughs> he loved to say that. He just, yeah. I don't know, I don't know where it came from. I think it was about the 10th time or so that he did my show in San Francisco or whatever. And then all of a sudden he started saying, Alex Bennett is still alive? And... Uh, I lovingly loved it when he did that. I yeah. just so loved it when he did that. It had his. Uh, hmm? When the time is right, you got to use that as a promo on your show. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it it was, and I just found that by the way yesterday uh, as I was going through. It's on the, uh, it's on the show. Well, you, you asked him to do it while you were interviewing him. No, uh, when I when, where that comes from is an interview I did at Sirius XM. I, I know, it's, but uh, no, I didn't but, ask him to do it. I didn't ask uh, him to do it. He, uh, I think, while I was watching it, you said, "Hey, would you mind?" Oh, oh that's on the TV thing, but on right. the audio thing, it yeah, just I it, hadn't if, heard. In fact, the audio. he does it at the top of it, at the interview, and at the end of the interview. But yeah. I just, I always loved it. I just, it, it just, it was something about, you know, and and oddly enough, when we do these parties every year I, when I'd show up he didn't yell that you know <laughs> he didn't yell that 
<laughs> but anyway, I you know I think anybody who knew Gilbert absolutely loved this guy. I don't think anybody had anything bad to say about him. I, I had never met him. Uh, he, you must have started with him after the Camel days. Uh, it happened. Uh, it happened. Uh, for, for, well, it was in at uh, what do you call it? Live one hundred and five. It's when we yeah. first started hanging out together. But anyway, it it you know I just I just uh, love the guy, and I I was so sorry when I heard the news yesterday, and then autom automatically my thoughts went to Dara and the kids, and the fact that they must be inconsolable right now. Yeah. You know, well, I, and, I, don't, I don't mean to, you know, to uh, to, to be a, a Debbie Downer here on, uh, uh, you know, having you, uh, you know, uh, go through this. You know, I, uh, you know, I, I figured maybe you wanted to talk about it and, and uh, get yeah, it. Well, I, I do like talking about it. You know, yeah. I mean, I like talking about it from the standpoint that I, I really like the guy and I really. And when I heard the news yesterday, I, I just was amazed at how uh, how terribly, you know, sad I was that it happened, you know, so. Yeah. What have you. So. Well, uh, let's see. In the last five minutes, uh, they caught the subway shooter. No, they already caught him. They caught him earlier today. I know. Today. They, they caught the subway shooter in the last five minutes of our, uh, of our uh, time uh, uh, together here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Frank James. Now, isn't Frank James? Wait a minute, uh, let me finish uh, my story. Artist? Wait a minute. I'm, can we finish one story before oh, going? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were. Uh... No. 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 I. I what I do want to say, um, and it's uh, you know, it, 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 this was a wonderful guy, and um, uh, I will never, I guess, hear him ever again say, uh, "Where is it." Alex Bennett is still alive? But years ago, I heard, uh, I can't remember who said it, when uh, George Gershwin died, somebody, and I can't remember who, who the performer was that said it. It might have been Oscar Levant, but I don't know mm -hmm. if that's and He was case. a Gershwin uh, buddy, guy. Buddy, yeah. uh, And uh, whoever said it said, today George Gershwin died, but I don't have to believe it. Mm. Uh, and... Um, uh, a couple of days ago, or within the last couple of days, uh, Gilbert Godfrey died, and I don't have to believe it. And so far as I'm concerned, forever. Yeah. Well, Gilbert that, Gilbert will be still alive. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, that's, that's one thing about what you've done by uh, preserving these interviews is, uh, you know, you, you keep them out there. Of course, you know, like you, he's had a lot of work. Uh, now was he was he in the Beverly Hills Cop? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Wasn't he like uh, he got a bunch of tickets? Not, he was trying. But to Bever the... Beverly Hills Cop too. Not. Oh, Beverly. okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's the first time I saw uh, any of his work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he was he was very good. Oh, he no, he he was terrific. He was great. Yeah, very funny guy. Yeah, but uh, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out, I guess I don't have any volume on this to speak of, so let me give myself some more volume. <laughs> well, you, you were coming through fine on, on my end. Or no, this is the... this is on the uh, on going out. Oh, on the YouTube? On the recording, yeah, of it. Well, I've oh. got to take care of it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, 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 no, well, I see they, they, what happened was um, they uh, changed my encoder on me. They put out a new one, so I bought into it. Mm -hmm. And then I suddenly noticed that one of my components, which is a volume increaser, is not here. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, uh, now, uh, are you ready for Frank James? What do you mean? Okay, okay give me your Frank James. Well, uh, you know, uh, well, first of all, isn't there, wasn't there a, uh, some sort of entertainer named Frank James? Uh, no, Frank James was Jesse James's brother. Uh, okay. Well, th this guy didn't look like Jesse James, the, the guy they uh, turned himself in at a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's amazing uh, the, the hate that he spewed on YouTube. But YouTube, they take off uh, uh, Donald Trump from YouTube, but they leave a guy on like this. Uh, you yeah, know. yeah, but they don't know 
You know, they, they, you can't follow everybody. Come on. You know, well, they've what, got algorithms. What do you expect? You hey, know? On, on Facebook, I posted a, a, a picture of um, uh, some uh, uh, like Clorox uh, mm -hmm. for the end all be all cure for COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they restricted me for 30 days. You know, and it, it was obviously a joke and a parody, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, their algorithm picked that up. Uh, and talking about these other social medias, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Elon Musk buys uh, several billion dollars worth of Twitter. Then, uh, so that's like 9%. And I think he's going to try to buy the whole thing or at least get controlling interests and and change the way Twitter does business. Well, you see, that's how you don't keep up with the news. Well, he, he, they wanted to put him on the uh, on the board, and he refused. No, he 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 got out of that whole deal because he didn't want to be part of it. So, yeah, but he he bought uh, he still owns nine point something percent of Twitter, and uh, and they wanted to put certain restrictions on him. Uh, if uh, that would limit him to 14 percent purchase and that he couldn't uh, give uh, anybody he couldn't tell anybody the algorithms that Twitter uses mm -hmm. and uh, I guess he didn't want those restrictions so he decided not to go on the board now did something happen between then and now from what I read he got out of the whole deal he, he sold his stock I think so I think he decided not to do it not to buy the stock or something well, it went up 30% after he bought it. Well, uh, I, I don't know, but all I know is that the deal was off. Huh. That's okay, well, that one I didn't see. Uh, but uh, I knew but, that... But, but what, you got a hard-on for him having anything to do with Twitter? No, I think it's great. Uh, I, I, you know, I think that uh, maybe he's a real patriot. He's and, a real patriot? How do you figure yeah, that? Yeah, and he's going to open up the lines of communication that Twitter is really a um, a town square, and uh, and you know, it, well, I, I, think I mean, you could say, you could say it's a town square. Excuse me, I was here trying to fix something while we're on the air. Yeah, you know, kind of like a soapbox uh, yeah. uh, was during the Revolutionary War times. Well, uh, it, you know, I don't think so. Okay, I, I and I don't think it has a responsibility to be one. Well, it might change with uh, Elon Musk's uh, ownership. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they said that uh, for thirteen billion, he could own the whole thing, and he's got what two hundred and sixty billion. So thirteen billion is kind of a drop in the bucket to this guy. I don't think he wants to own it. I, I you know, I mean, come on. I do you want to own Twitter? If you had the money, would you buy Twitter? Uh, maybe he's got fu money. No, but why would you buy Twitter? What does because Twitter have to face, offer you? Fin you can't. Fin you can't buy Facebook. Facebook has got too high of a valuation, but Twitter, which is widely used, uh, is within his reach. Well, but the problem is, is that Twitter is uh, somewhat one-dimensional, you know, where yeah, Facebook he, has many different aspects. Well, uh, did you hear one of his suggestions was to put an edit uh, button on Twitter so that you could edit your posts? Uh, so if you thought better about it? Yeah. You know, that's not a bad idea. I mean, that's the reason why I'm very careful about what I put up on Twitter. I mean, you can you can eliminate your whole post. Yeah. So the question would be, why do you need an edit button? You know. Well, yeah, that's that. I didn't know that. I stopped using Twitter after Trump was uh, thrown off of it. Well, people were doing that. You know, when they would suddenly, all of a sudden, uh, uh, they would sit, write something, and everybody would start complaining. They would take it down. Okay. Although there's always seems to be screenshots of the original post. Well, because some people see it, they make a screenshot, and then they keep posting it and posting right. it and posting it, even yeah. though you've taken it down. Yeah. So, you know, that's the problem. Can you stick around? Sure. Yeah, because, you know, the, these people like having you here, you know, yeah. mainly because it's always nice to have somebody around who's a pain in the ass. So. <laughs> makes, makes me look good. Well, yeah. you got Alan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the one thing I just want to say, uh, and it was kind of interesting, is that you said to me, well, you know, uh, I, I, uh, my condolences, you know, for about Gilbert. And I've always found that 
I don't know. It's always bothered me when people offer me their condolences for somebody who died yeah. that I wasn't either married to or the son of or, you know, whatever. And I don't know if we don't use that term a little too often. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Were you um, affected by his loss? Well, I was bothered by his loss. You know, well, it, you it, it, part, of, part of it is my own mortality comes into question. Uh, we, yeah. all, we all do that. That's why we used to read the obituaries in the paper when they had newspapers. Uh, one of my favorite sections was the obituary because I was always looking to see if my name was there. And if it wasn't, it was a good day. Well, that's what, that's what, that's what, who was it? Carl Reiner used to say that I read the obituaries every morning. If I'm not there, I have my breakfast, you know? <laughs> so, I mean. But it, Musk, uh, Musk owns 9% of Twitter. Right. Still. Still. Yeah. Still? And okay. They offered him a place on the board and he turned we it all, down. We all do that. That's why we used to read the obituaries. Oh, the here we go. Your, uh, look at your browser. Jeff. And on the browser, you can click uh, the X on the GabNet thing. He's fixed it already. He's okay. fixed it already. Yeah. Okay. No echo. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, um, no, but I, I, I just uh, always, you know, I often wondered about that because people have done that before when I've had somebody I knew who died. Well, it, you know, yeah. it, it seemed as though you were close to him. And, and although I didn't know that at the time I gave you condolences, but I, do, I did know that uh, you knew him and that you had gotten together with him socially, and I thought it might have been a loss <laughs> and, uh, and, and hit you closer to home. And, oh you yeah, know, yeah. A friend yeah. or family, why not give condolences? And I'll tell you, I mean, today I was I went for a walk today. I, I walked a mile and I was exhausted. Mm hmm. You know, and I think it's, I haven't been out that much in the last uh, two, years. Uh, two <laughs> years, but in the last uh, three or four, uh, at least five or six months, because it's been cold and rainy, and uh, you know. I haven't had a reason to go out and take a walk, and now when I take a walk, I can I'm struggling, and I'm yeah. beginning to wonder if, if death is not far, and if, uh, is near. Same to, thing for me. Really? Yeah. Is that because of the winter? Do you think? Yeah. Or just yeah, because well, we're becoming altacacas? I've got some other issues. Yeah. That I'm not quite sure what they are, but yeah. anyway, I'm. Uh, but I took a, a nice walk and and it was good. Well, I took a brisk. Bad. I took a fairly decent walk with Marjorie today, and it was about a mile and a third. And uh, you know, I'll try another one tomorrow and see if I can do it without passing out. You know. Yeah. Um, but I was also lightheaded and so on. And then I realized I haven't I haven't taken my blood pressure pill for the last couple of days, so that oh. probably had oh, something to do with it. Because you low... check your blood pressure? No. No, no, no. You should get one of mine every day. Puffs. You, te you test yours every day? Why do you check yours every day, Charlie? Because I'm taking medicine for high blood pressure. I want to make sure it stays down. Oh, okay. Me too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, th I think what happened was it maybe went up a little bit, and I was lightheaded, and I didn't think. I know I have yeah. one of those, yeah. too. I, I have one, one of those, too. Every day? Yeah. I got uh, the same one as Jeff. Really? Omron or Omron or whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I've got to, I've got to just start taking my pills every day. I, I've been forgetting to take my pills is what it is. Baby steps, Alex. When you haven't walked a lot, you got to go. You can't yeah. go three miles the first day. Right. Right. Yeah, and if your blood pressure is uh, is is uh, high, uh, and you bend over mm -hmm. or you know you do something, you tie your shoelace or something, right. all of a sudden you'll get lightheaded. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I get yeah. lightheaded just getting up out of bed, you know. I, I actually on do Wednesday test. when you got to look at Phil. <laughs> yeah, welcome, folks. This is the show all young people watch. Yeah. <laughs> they. So I, I did three tests. I lay down, mm -hmm. check my pressure and all of that, mm -hmm. and then I sat up, mm -hmm. like the way we're sitting now. Mm -hmm. I checked it again, mm -hmm. and then I stood up. And tested again. And tested a third time. Okay, and which one was higher? And which, uh, you know what, they were both about the same. Really? Which was good. Yeah. When, when, it, when, it, when it says you're dead, then you're in trouble. <laughs> you won't be able to take the cuff off. <laughs> 
But anyway, so I, you know, so I mean, and then I had you know, I had this other friend die, uh, a friend of the family's, and we went to Shiva on Sunday, and yeah. he died on, I believe it was, I think it was uh, Friday, and I think probably that was probably when Gilbert died. Uh, mm. And and so having all this death around me, you know, really just you know. I'm with Phil. I, I give my condolences to you, Alex. Yeah. Well, you know, he was a guy I liked. You know, and uh, he was a friend, not just somebody you liked. He was a friend. Yeah. Well, so I condolences to you are, are appropriate. I see, think. I don't know how to define friend. I I know that sounds difficult, and just look on Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have 500 of them. Whoa! 5,000. 5,000, excuse me. I forgot. That's how old I'm getting. Uh, no, but anyway, um, uh, uh, oh, gee, I just got dizzy from doing that. You know. what, what was it? What was it? What were we saying? What was uh, it? We're talking about you, you, you doubt the, who's a friend. and. Oh, it, well, when, when I, yeah, when I hear that term friend, I don't use that term too often you know uh i i use the term acquaintance more often than i use friend mm -hmm. because and i think gilbert was an acquaintance it's not like i called him up twice a week and said hi how's you how's it going mm -hmm. i saw you last night no no it wasn't that kind of thing so you know uh it, 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 it that's what i'm talking about uh, uh, Shecky's probably the only friend I have in this whole world right now. I know that's sad that I, you know, but I know Jeff. I've, I've sat down with Jeff, you know, but, and Jeff and I, though, are acquaintances. Wouldn't you say, Jeff? I mean, yes, you know, absolutely. maybe verging on friend because I'd like to see you more often because I enjoy your company, you know. So certainly, uh, maybe. Why don't you come down here more maybe often? Then I can get to see each other. Then I can have another friend, you know. <laughs> And, uh, there was a there was a time when we were friends. I remember you and Susan saying, you know, Phil's here more uh, than uh, you, you know. I, I was I was with you guys a lot. Yeah, you were, yeah. you were, yeah. you know. But I mean, all I'm saying is is that I think we tend to throw the word friend around uh, too easily. Uh, and I think uh, in recent years, I've only had about th oh three good friends: Shecky. My friend Bruce, who died. My friend Steve, who died. You know. So. I think I think I think there's three levels. There's acquaintances, there's friends, and then there's good friends. To me, the difference is good friends you go out and do things with once in a while. Mm -hmm. Like Phil and I go to dinner or we go shooting or something. That's mm -hmm. a good friend. Mm -hmm. Friends can be all of us on the show. We're all friendly to you. Well, if you like to go acquaintances or somebody. You, you know, know can I can I interject about. there? I think that uh, a friend is someone that you've built trust with. You know, uh, you got to have trust, and uh, you and and also, as Alan says, you do stuff together, which builds a bond. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, but friends come and go. I mean, uh, like my friend Steve, when he was alive. I mean, I would go over and see Steve. We'd get to see each other maybe three, four days a week. You know, we were always there, always calling each other. If he had a problem, I listened to him. If I had a problem, he'd listen to me. Uh, you know, when I was uh, came to New York, I stayed with them for nine months, something like that, on their couch. Uh, you know, that's how good a friend he was. Well, you did that a lot, didn't you? Stay with Phil when you were in San Francisco. No, I stayed on his sofa. Oh, when, in ah. Sausalito. There were uh, the the hillsides were coming down from massive floods. And my where I lived uh, was just below the Altamira Hotel, and yeah. they evacuated that those buildings. Right. So he and so I in stayed in Alex's place for a week on his. So and then they. Can you imagine how place. horrible that is? I mean, not not. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not talking about the landslides. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, and then the police would not let anybody in or out of Sausalito, and so. We were stuck there, and we did your show from your dining room table. On the telephone. On the telephone, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was your only guest, again. <laughs> well, I, I always think that Phil is, is a good friend because he's just, he, you know, he's the opposite of anybody. Well, oh, I right? was saying to Marjorie the other day, because we got into this discussion about friends, 
okay. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know, I'm beginning to think that maybe these people who do the show with me every night are my friends. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, we don't live in the same town, we don't see each other, but we talk to each other, you know, three days a week. Probably more than most friendships. Yeah. So I, I just wonder if, uh, you know, if that isn't uh, sure. I, isn't a, uh, a a sign of friendship. I'm, That's I'm what technology has done for trust. people. Look, look, look at all. No, the it, what it's done is it's what it's done for people is make them lazy friends. I know, but <laughs> look at all. I, I've reconnected with a tremendous amount of people from uh, that that I knew in the past. Friends that you know maybe I hadn't talked to in four or five years, and then all of a sudden you look them up on Facebook, and boom, mm. you know you're, you're you're back in touch. Yeah, but that you know it's too easy. You know, in the old mm. days, in order to be a friend oh, to somebody, you had to get in your car and go over to their house. Yeah, you know, that, and uh, uh, maybe you'd call them on the telephone. Yeah, but you know, are you zooming them? No, you know, it's just yeah. another way of doing it. It's uh, you know, okay. You didn't have to dial the telephone, but uh, you know, with the Zoom, you got to figure it out. I, I consider Phil a good friend because we do things together. Yeah, we but have you, a lot of okay, I, and I agree with you. You know, right. but you see each other. That's right. You buy highly expensive steaks together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, when Alan comes over, we only do happy hour. <laughs> it's your choice, not mine. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, yeah. I happy mean, hour menu. That's because you only feel comfortable in the bar with the cocktail waitress gives you extra attention. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the only. The bar. Hey. <laughs> I ate there tonight. Where Ruth? Ruth's Chris? Chris. Yeah. I got a picture in the lobby. <laughs> no, that's Ruth's no, Chris no, picture. But, but I look a lot like her. Yeah, they have it at the front me. door saying, "Do not admit this man." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I tip good. Yeah. I'm still I'm still COVID tipping. You know. Yeah. This is is the steak there that good? I don't it's know. better than other places. It's all prime beef. Yeah. Well, we have a place it, here it, in New York that's supposed to be pretty phenomenal called Peter Luger's. Oh, yeah. yeah, my yeah. yeah. Uh, this, this is probably not as good as that. Yeah. But it's it's damn good, and it's consistent. You know you know why McDonald's is so successful? Everywhere you go in the world, the burger tastes the same. Yeah. Well, I go to Ruth's Chris, whether it's in Honolulu, Maui, uh, or uh, San Francisco. Well, the San Francisco closed, but Walnut Creek. Uh, and Ruth's Chris is consistent. What you get there is is um, it's it's better than the McDonald's of steaks. It's a really good steak, but it's consistent and it's consistently good. And, and the service is good. Service is good. Yeah. So and and the prices aren't so bad. I, I mean, in today's world, uh, a, a nice New York steak, which was like twenty ounces, I think it was sixty one dollars. Mm. And. Uh, and I had that, and I had the spicy shrimp, and uh, I took home a bread pudding for dessert. <laughs> so. Well, I, you, 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 you know, I, um, um, I, we the other day on the on the four o'clock show, we started talking about steaks and the best mm -hmm. place to buy steaks. You know, to get steaks in your area. You know, and here in New York, we had well, we were talking about San Francisco, the house of prime rib. House Prime Rib's great. It's been around for a million years. And somebody told me, if you don't mind, one of our know. San Francisco callers, or yeah. said to me, it's 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 terrific. It's still terrific after all yeah. these years. You know, usually a place like that, after a while, you know, you go in one day, say, boy, I'll, House of Prime Rib, let's go there, and then you go there, and you're and eating shoe good. leather. You know, you know what closed after 97 years? The Aliotos. Yes, I heard that. Yeah. Angela Alioto was a good friend of mine. Yeah, well, uh, who was the mayor, Alioto? Uh, yes. yes. He was her assassinated. Father. No, that, oh, was no, no that, was that was Moscone. That was Moscone. Yeah, her, and, her father. No. Uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> I used to say, how, so um, uh, what relation are you to those Aliotos? And she said, oh, that's my cousin, I think, or something. My, oh, maybe her brother. I don't know. I, I, it wasn't her dad? It was her father, I was there? Was it her father? Yeah, I think so. And then when he became mayor, he had to give up his children. 
po uh, his power <laughs> over it or whatever. Anyway, anyway, he I was uh, a supervisor in San Francisco. Yeah, and I told the story the other day. I told the story the other day. What's that? That she, uh, you know, I was had her on the air one day, and I said, uh, by the way, Angela, because I loved Angela. She was terrific. She was the best. And I said, Angela, I said, I got to tell you, the other day I was down there in Fisherman's Wharf for one reason or another, and I have never gone into Aliotos. I always went over to Fisherman's uh, Grotto Number no. 9. That was the place I always Pretty went good. to. Yeah. And, 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 and I said, I decided to go over to Aliotos. And she says, well, I says, terrible. <laughs> I said, just horrible. Tourist, tourist stuff. Yeah, tourist stuff. I said, you know, I, I, I've been going at number nine for years. It's not a form of defecating. It's number nine is the name of the, of the uh, Fisherman's, Fisherman's Grotto. Fisherman's Grotto number nine. I said, I can, I go in there, I get a certain level of crab, and I like it. You know, I went here, the crab looked like it was anemic. You know. You know what they had at Fisherman's uh, number nine was the uh, crab Louis was uh it's a louis salad yeah you know? yeah 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 i used to like ordering the cat crab louis yeah or as i used to call it the crab louis <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know it's uh, not nothing's the same anymore and, and people here who are in the on the east coast and in texas uh, another person there and another guy here in new york don't know from good crab because no, the best crabs we do get it out here, but it doesn't travel well. And the best crab, I think, anywhere is Dungeness crab. Dungeness, right. And it is just, it's Well, I, I like in Florida uh, the, uh, what, what is it? Stone the, the, crab? Uh, stone crab, the legs. I hate stone crab, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't believe in cruelty to animals. If you're going to eat them, kill them. Okay, but in the case of the stone crab, here's what they do, folks. They cut off they catch them and they cut off one they leg it off. they break it break off it one off. leg and yeah. they throw them back in the ocean it grows back they throw another leg yeah it, yeah they, mm -hmm. they it grows back but it takes time in the meantime this poor crab is down there on the bottom going around in circles because he doesn't have <laughs> one claw right yeah. And I always thought it was really cruel because he's a crab and all of a sudden he gets caught and he goes, oh my God, well, that's the end of my he life. He says, I'm still alive. But wait a minute, wait a minute, what are they doing? They're, they're breaking off my claw. Ouch, that hurts. Oh, what are they doing now? They're throwing me back in the water. I'm free again. There we go. There's a picture of Bam it. Bam salad. Looks good. Oh, no, that's stone crab. That oh, was a like big a bucket of stone crab in Key Largo. Uh, I went into this uh, restaurant and uh, this was the they have different sizes this was the largest size and you, they had do, a big do you want, bucket you, do you want to know why i can't eat stone crab no why okay let me explain it to you i bite my fingers oh well they're very sharp this, minute, this me, was me, my me, meal you're not going to listen to me let me finish <laughs> all right that was my meal oh good fine show us your meal who gives I, a shit yeah i hate people who go on facebook and take pictures of the food oh, they just God, had. i hate that too you know. Any, anyway, uh, I have a tendency to bite my fingernails, so I'm, it, they're yeah. never completely in good shape, okay? They're kind of raw. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I've been doing it all my life. Well, stone crab, I don't know, something about stone crab, they have a certain uh, acidic quality or something yeah. that whenever I would eat them, the juice from the stone crab would get into my hands and it started to sting, and I, my hands would be on fire after I got through eating stone crabs. <laughs> So I had to quit eating so stone crabs. Uh, yeah, bring some uh, oh. latex gloves. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say, can you do like a lot? Somebody yeah. did that when uh, Phil and Jeff I went out. Yeah. Jeff is. Uh, yes, Jeff. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Alex. So I know that you you go to Spain a lot. No, well, I don't. I don't go to Spain a lot. I used to go to Spain. Well, I used a lot. to. Okay. I yeah. am. But anyway, do you ever go to the Sevilla? A restaurant in the village? Sevilla? No, I haven't. That's all Spanish food? Is it? Oh, Excellent. Really? Yeah. Because, it's you like, know, I, it's very hard to go anywhere and order paella after having it in Spain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I had a lobster paella. I was down off that Los Rambles. Yeah, and the Rambles. 
Rambles, and yeah. uh, I walked down an alley, and there was a, a restaurant, and uh, it had just a chicken in in the uh, outdoor kind of yeah, on a rotisserie. Yeah. I walked in. It turns out this restaurant is from 1765, oh, and I ordered a lobster paella for two, and we sat down and had this thing it was orgasmic i've never had anything so wonderful in my life i used uh, to go to a place on in ibiza out on a beach uh where they had this shack and yeah. they served up paella and it was the most incredible paella i have ever fresh. had in my life it's fresh it's, it's fresh fun. everything's fresh i mean right. but i mean it was just incredible and paella in spain is just it, it, it's orgasmic <clears throat> Okay, yeah. I've gotten paella here. Right? Somebody says, "You want great paella? Go to Joe's Paella or whatever." <laughs> so I go, and it's not. I'm sorry, it has nothing to do with the kind of paella I'm used to, you know. So <laughs> there's nothing like paella in Spain. To oh tell yeah, you the damn truth. Yeah, uh, oh, absolutely. Anyway, so Kevin, how are you doing? You're a little quiet tonight. Good. <laughs> I don't look so happy. <laughs> He's trying to order Uber paella. Yeah. He's trying, trying to get some clams and lobsters. Well, down where you are, is there a good restaurant for steak or paella or anything like that? No. Okay. I'll well, we finish with that one. Got a total of about 12 restaurants in this town, and they're all used up. Uh, mean they're yeah, all well, in, in, in your town, it's more of a biker town than it is. Uh, uh, yeah, not really. It's more yeah. of a nothing town. You know, bars and stuff like that. Well, at uh, least when it, in Monterey, bars. you've got some great stuff, right? What's that? Carmel? Monterey, yeah. 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 I mean, that's not that far. Yeah, I've been I mean, some very good places down there. Yeah. Yeah, Monterey is good. I remember one place, it was right up on a hill, kind of up on a hill looking down over the ocean. Uh, and had, was that that hotel with the... Um, well, it's called the Tickle Pink Inn now. It used to be Highlands Inn. Highlands Inn, yeah. Ellen's in and Carmel. Oh, Tickle Pink in now. Really? I, I didn't know they changed the name. Is yeah. it overstated the Highlands in? Really? No. I, I I've seen I've I've seen it and you know, and some of the rooms I've seen them advertised, like you know, they with the odd a long time ago. But anyway. Uh, spectacular. Yeah. Uh, now Clint Eastwood had a place called the Pork Tarpies. Tarpies. Yeah. It, it, it was like a pork barbecue down there. Yeah, it was Tarpies down off 68. Uh, no, no, this was in Carmel. Carmel. Oh, yeah, he had another one down there, too. Yeah. Pig and something? Pig and... Um, yeah, I forgot what it's called. Something like that. Uh, yeah. What the hell is it? It's still there, too. Is yeah, it, he's not he, as good as it used to be. He's still no. living in Carmel, isn't he? I think so. He's still existing. He's like... He's 90. Body and bones. Yeah. Yeah, I. How many more movies do you think he can make? I don't know. I don't know. I saw him a couple of years down there at Gizditch Ranch, the Pie Ranch. I think uh, he's, I was, isn't he the isn't he just about the oldest director in America? Yeah. 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 Well, he still gets around. Mm. What's yeah. a good steak, uh, Tony? I'm not a steak eater. My brother likes steak. He. I don't, I like, you know, I'll eat hamburger, but I never was a steak eater, and neither, my mother didn't like it either. He's a Campbell's soup guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do the Campbell's tomato soup, that I do like, yeah. <laughs> Even though I should make them, i got to learn how to make tomato well, soup. Well, I often wondered, you know, about, like, uh, the great chefs of the world, where do they go? What do they, so, a good point. Okay. Do you think they go to these places, or no? What, what, Jeff? Yeah, Jeff said. Go, go for steak to Buenos Aires. Yeah, yeah, I heard that South America is and right. uh, can't get a bad a steak in Buenos Aires. That's can't right. You? Wow. Yes, uh, Charlie. Clint Eastwood is ninety-one years old. I just looked it up too. Yeah. Yep. Well, Gene, another Born nine years. I'll be nineteen thirty. Jesus. And he said, "I think he's still directing. Didn't he just do a film recently?" Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Yeah, a year or two ago. Yeah. So, you know. Get off my lawn six. <laughs> mm. Grand Torino. That was a good movie. Yeah, I liked it. It was, yeah. I liked where he had the uh, the rifle and was pointing at those guys that were on his lawn. Oh, yeah. Um, they, you know, they have those clips on YouTube, and you can, and you can watch different scenes from different movies. 
and that um, the one where uh, the next door neighbor, the young girl, was kind of being uh, accosted by some kids in front of a store, mm -hmm. and uh, he gets out. He goes like this, and they think he's nuts. And uh, then he pulls out his forty-five, and he says, <laughs> "Get in the truck." <laughs> yeah, it was uh, that was a good scene. Hmm. Yeah, well, I uh, what Grand he called, them, he called them spooks. Yeah, well, I I don't think that's a der that's a derogatory term, but um, well, it's, maybe it's, in the movie wait, it's wait, 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 spooks is not term. a derogatory term. I said it I mean, is a derogatory oh, term. I say, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, now there's something that I'm watching. Uh, I think it's on Netflix. It, uh, the Outsiders or The Outlaws, uh, it's with um, uh, Walken, Christopher Walken. He's got to be close to 92. Mm, yeah, maybe. No, uh, he's not, seen... but he looks it. Yeah, have you seen that one? I think it's called The the Out Outlaws. Uh, uh, I'm, I probably got through two seasons. So you know, I've got I, I gotta to tell you, i got to tell you something. I, 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 it's just Netflix is just I'm getting so tired of goddamn Netflix. Again. Everything they do oh. is just mediocre. Yeah. You know? Um I mean uh, Marjorie loves it because she and she starts binge watching just like, you know, Irish soap operas. I don't know what they are. <laughs> this is, this is from England. Uh, he's 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 in England and he's in a work furlough program because uh, he got out of prison and 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 so he's there with a, a bunch of other people. They find some money, and you know they they, they get involved in, uh, in in a bunch of stuff. Well, I don't know. Uh, I just I, I just get very tired of it. It's worth I, watching. You know what I get tired of is Netflix laying claim to having things be a Netflix original. It's original. Yeah. yeah. You know what they did is they bought it from the BBC, and then they call it a Netflix original. Mm hmm. You know when it isn't. Peaky Blinders. They say Netflix original. I'm sorry, it was on Channel 4 in England, okay? <laughs> you know, uh, they didn't come up with it. Yeah, so. But Marjorie yeah. loves her. You know, I'd love to get rid of it. I wouldn't have it right now if it weren't for Marjorie. She has got to have her Netflix. So basically, so she can binge watch something and, and avoid me, you know, so. <laughs> you know, let me, let me see if I can find the name of it. I, uh, yeah, I watch two, three episodes, and then I go away for a while. Uh, out. Well, it, it, I'm sure it's called The Outlaws. I think I saw that name up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe that's yeah. Uh, yeah, The Outlaws series, and uh, it's with um, Christopher Walken. Yeah, and the, the documentary though that they're running on, I don't know if you've film? seen it. The one on uh, the uh, uh, a, a British horror show, The Jimmy Seville Story. Uh, Has anybody seen this thing? Mm -hmm. This is about a guy. See, you don't know who Jimmy Seville is because we're Americans. We don't watch British television, most yeah. of us. Jimmy Seville had been around for about 40 years on, on British television. And he had been one of the most beloved performers on television. I can't tell you why because he was one of the strangest looking human beings you'll ever see. And he went out and he helped hospitals raise money and so on and he used to have a show called uh, Jim will fix it all right and what he would do is bring little kids on and the little kids would have like it was like it was like make a wish okay and then he would make their their dreams come true all right so he became just loved by British people and also he was the the host of top of the pops which was the biggest rock program in England and this went on for about 40 years. And he was royalty. Princess Di would come on his shows and loved him. And Prince Andrew wanted to hang around him. Prince Charles Prince wanted Prince to Andrew hang Prince Andrew hung around everybody, including uh, uh, I know, uh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but uh, uh, Prince Charles, you know, everybody wanted to mm. be around. And then finally, they actually made him a knight. They knighted him. Oh. And, and he became Sir oh. Jimmy Seville. Well, they find out that all the years that he had been doing that, he'd been using it as a cover to be a pedophile. And it is, it is estimated that over the 30 or 40 year period that he was on television, he had buggered about 400 different individuals, both boys and girls. Kids. And, yeah. Oh, he was bisexual. And, boys some, and, girls. and some of them, 
some of them in his BBC dressing room. Wow. Wow. And he got away with this for like 30, 40 years. Did he and claim that, to be a priest or something? No, he was a TV personality. I but you, 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 so you got to go. You got to watch this. It's really an yeah, amazing it documentary. There, there, there is, is that a picture of him? Where, where? Yeah, yeah, that looks see. like Kevin. Oh, it looks like Kevin with a big old white beard. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's in the background there. You can't see him too well. Oh, he's in the, not the guy in the front. That okay. isn't you in the front. Yeah, but that Clint's in the back there. Oh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, you're not showing a picture oh. of Jimmy Seville. <laughs> I'm talking about Jimmy Seville. You're talking about Jimmy Seville, and all along you've been looking for your picture with Clint Eastwood. <laughs> uh, I had to find him. It was six years ago. There he is, walking by my truck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, you can't. Oh, you won't focus. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, that's. Uh, like that, a stop sign. He still looked old then. Hmm? Yeah. That was six years ago. Yeah. So anyway, so you know, I mean, uh, so this documentary on Jimmy Seville, you probably should watch. And then today we watched the first episode of the series that's been produced and narrated by Barack Obama on the national parks of the world, not of just here, but of the world. And uh, it is really quite brilliant and quite good. And he is just so charming as a narrator, you know. Uh, yeah, I want to watch that. Yes, uh, yeah, yes, uh, Alan. Did, did anybody pick up Tucker Carlson on Friday night or Saturday morning? Announced that you know that the, the war in Ukraine that most of it is fake. The people that were dead did this right on the news. The I was spreading that. Were dead news. in the streets were actors. After they filmed that, they panned away and they got up and walked. Away. Walk I, away. No, I I, w I made up. Of a narrative, I said that the Ukrainian war was actually fake news propagated by North Korea, and uh, you know, so maybe it stuck. <laughs> but, I, but I was kidding. <laughs> I think he was serious. I I <laughs> don't, you know, I just don't know how a guy like Tucker Carlson could do this. What I find abominable is how a company like Fox can allow him yep. to do it. I mean, even they've got to be sitting there uh, saying I, this I, guy I, is out of it. You know? If he would have said that, then you would have seen it somewhere else. I I, I didn't see I'll it. I'll bet you can oh, find it. Oh, it's been all over YouTube. What do you mean? Yeah, you really. Come it? on, Phil. Wake up. Yeah. Well, that's because I'm watching the outlaws. You're not going to find it on Dredge. Yeah. On, on Dredge, yeah. you mean Drudge, not Dredge. Yeah, that's yeah. Dredge, is better. Dredge is better. You Dredge is yeah. sewer. Uh, Tucker. Uh, mm. Tucker Carlson. Well, let's all sit around and wait while yeah. Phil. Yeah. This could take 20 minutes as quick yeah. as this. Fake yeah. news. Let's talk about our friend from uh, New York who decided to turn himself in. Oh, Frankie. And, and it Frankie. didn't happen yeah. during the first oh, he half didn't hour. He didn't turn know. himself in. They found him. No, no, he turned, no, he he turned himself, himself in. in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he called the police. He called him up and said, nah, I'm at McDonald's. Come on down. Oh, no. really? I didn't realize yeah. that. That, that. That happened what... hours ago, not while you were on Alex's show, the first part of it, Phil. No, no, I know. I, I, I heard it earlier today. Right. Right. See, what I had read is that they had gotten a, a call from McDonald's. That's what I heard, too. Like saying that, that, that they, had, they think they had the guy in there. And by the time they got down there, he had just left. So they then followed him and went down the street, and they saw him, and they cornered him and stopped him and arrested him. Okay, because I, I I had heard, I had heard that he called and said I'm at the McDonald's and I'm turning. Well, I think somebody down the street, and then another store owner called and said he's down here. He got two calls after after he called the police. He probably got tired of waiting for him. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. He was hopefully that they were going to give him some money for turning himself in. <laughs> <laughs> Guess, somebody said that he lost his credit card. Says here, yeah. Carlson has denied saying the quote in a tweet. Uh, and uh, Walsh told, I don't know who Walsh is, told USA Today it's made up. It's all yeah. over the internet, Phil. Yeah, um, well, it, just because it's if it's on the internet, it must be true, Alan. No, and Phil, if, they, if yeah. somehow they've got the, the, uh, the uh, footage of him doing it, then I think it's immutable. Well, yep. I don't know that they have the footage because he's claiming that it's that it's fake. 
I you know, thought they got Trump doing a bunch of stuff, and they still said he didn't. You do know it, what, so. what's amazing to me is Putin saying around uh, 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 everywhere, uh, uh, "What what atrocities? We haven't done those." This is uh, USA right. Today fact check. He's doing Trump our rating that. on this on that story is false. Based on our research, we rate false the claim that Carlson suggested photos of bodies in Bucha could have been staged by Ukrainians. That's USA Today, the kind of newspaper they put at your hotel door. Yeah, you know? Oh, I'm supposed, to believe, wait a minute, I'm supposed to believe USA Today that their entire um, um, audience for their newspaper are people who don't want to see their newspaper in black and white? Right. <laughs> well, you mean they got a little color? They got color, yeah. They got the blue. Do you know this? When he tells the lie, he turns orange, just like Trump. <laughs> oh no, the it's colors just, changing, Phil. I, I, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, it's the mood, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Right. I I got the same light as you, Alex, except I I haven't adjusted it yet. Oh, God. Well, the uh, a Golo or whatever it is. The what? Uh, what what's what's the kind of light? Elgato. You have? Yeah, Elgato. Yeah. Yeah. The cat. Well, I have two of them. I have two, but they're both different kinds of. One's yeah. one's bigger than the other. But only yeah. only when Phil tells the story, you don't have to have a drink. Just wait for him to turn orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So anyway, I mean, uh, uh, I just uh, you know, I just. Uh, I just, I, can't I just, I, the Fox News allows this guy to stay. Well, on. well, you see what he I didn't do, no, do it. But, but no, but he, but he's done a lot of other crap. Well, and he's had a lot matter. of misinformation. He didn't do this one. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. The point is that Fox is not a terribly responsible news organization if they allow these these uh, people to just say anything they want to say and they're but still there the next say day. It. It, it's you left wings that that are that are saying. Worse. That. Okay, let's say he didn't say that. He's said a lot of other crap that's wrong. Yeah. Doesn't matter. This one he didn't say. All right, but we're not talking about that now, Phil. We're talking about the fact that his conduct over the last many years has been egregious, and Fox does nothing to say, "Hey, look, check your sources first and prove Is that to us." That the guy. That's the guy that had you on his show on Fridays. Well, every Friday. Yeah. Okay. I think one way to change <laughs> one way to change his mind is Fox News ought to send him to Ukraine and let him, you know, broadcast yeah. from Ukraine. That'll change his. Hey, attitude. did you see Boris Johnson walking down Wait the street? Let me, let me finish. With Wait, hold on a second. Hold on Zelensky. A second. Before we do that, yeah. uh, I mean, there's something I wanted to ask Charlie Wallace, and now I forgot oh. what I wanted to ask Charlie Wallace. <laughs> Okay. Or did you have your hand raised or something? No. No? Okay. Yes, Phil. You want to talk about Boris Johnson? Yeah. yeah. And Biden, I've suggested Biden, while he was there, he was in the territory, he was in the neighborhood, uh, he could have just jumped across the border. He could have spit across the border from where he was. He should have gone into, you know... Well, well, Harris was there. She should have gone in. She's not worth much. So, you know, you know, no. I, but I was surprised that it was Boris Johnson. Uh, that, I was, too. I yeah. was, too. And, and that just upped his worth, you know, oh, with yeah. the British people. And if, oh, yeah. if, if Biden had done that, he would have helped himself. He would have helped the Democratic Party in the elections, <laughs> things like that. You know? Oh, yeah. By the way, Charlie, I noticed something, Charlie. You take oh, yeah. you take assessing of the various statistics for the day and so mm -hmm. on, and you talk here about the total deaths so far being, uh, where was it? Uh, what are the totals? 987,331. So when do you figure we're going to hit 1 million? Well, probably uh, by May 1st because numbers have been going up lately. Now, there's 330 million people in this country, mm -hmm. and 80 million, Charlie says, have come down with COVID. Yep. So if COVID now is responsible for a natural immunity, regardless of how long it wait, uh, it lasts, that's quite a number of people when you add that. No, well, you got to remember that one million, one million of those people almost are dead. Yeah. One million total. And by, but, the, by the way, we don't have a real good um, um, idea of how many people have gotten it lately. 
because what happened is we started sending out all these test yourself at home things. Yeah. Test at home. So people do the home test. They Which find is crappy. Out. Yeah. But what happens, if crappy or not, if they test positive, where does that wind up? Where does that information wind up? You it know, doesn't it, go yeah, anywhere. It stays at you home. Know, you know, Jeff, it's crappy except for when Omicron was going nuts and you had to wait weeks to get a test. It's, it's at least better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah, but the point I, I agree with you yeah. on that. But. You know why <clears throat> million deaths? Because during COVID, if you got hit by a car, but you also tested positive. Oh, stop COVID. it, Phil. Yeah, they they did that was a COVID death. Uh, and the uh, hospitals, yeah. the hospitals were paid a no, lot. No, they weren't. That has been oh, debunked oh, a thousand times. That's bullshit. Oh, but Tucker Carlson saying that the thing is false, that, that, that you know, that's, that's, that's not bullshit. Phil, why, you, why you, you don't believe... wait, 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 hold on a second. Why are you changing the topic to Tucker, Tucker Carlson when we're, saying, you don't minute, believe... when we're saying you're wrong? No, I'm saying you're wrong. But I'm... <laughs> Listen, I didn't make those wait, claims. Wait, wait a second. He's going to turn orange again. <laughs> yeah. I, you got to move to... Where the uh, where the light gets it? Yeah. Do you have two? Do you have, do you have, do you have two? Do you have two lights cool. there? Uh, yeah, uh, but only one El Gato, and the other one's an LED uh, 900 bulb LED photo light. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking of getting another one just like this one over here. It's only about 129 bucks. And putting I, this I like the El Gatos. They're they're really nice. Uh, yeah. The only thing I don't like about them is they work off your uh, uh, your Wi-Fi, and, uh, and yeah, sometimes they do, sometimes they turn off. Well, I, I got this, but I haven't hooked it up yet. This is also Elgato. It's yeah, but that's a, I use I use one of these here. That's what I use, but I don't use that one. That's too small, Phil. Well, I only wanted to control the lights. Oh, well, you could have done that just with the with my phone. No, there's a there's an app that you can you have that says that uh, that runs along the top of your screen, and you can yeah. click down on that and you can turn them on and off. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So I have to teach him something every day. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you something. I, I, um, uh, Kevin and I and Patrick usually get together on Saturday nights along with mm -hmm. J J Josh Wheeler. And we just talk. Right, Kevin? It's nothing, to, no tale out of school here. The other night I wasn't feeling well at all. And I don't know why. I just, it was feeling sickly and so when I got them all on uh, I was on for about 45 minutes and then when they were all on I decided I was gonna bake out because I just you know I just I didn't have the strength to to do it and uh, I come back about 1 15 in the morning and they're still talking <laughs> how I hear that you guys went what three hours that night or went till two o'clock in the morning our time yeah, it was pretty crazy i don't know what we what you time got, we got done yeah i mean i could have never made that you know well we've done that on jack's on the intersection we stay on after he logs off and then we've talked for sometimes two two and a half hours will the will the zoom still keep oh well, well, you know you're doing yeah. you're doing skype we're on, we're on you're, on you're on youtube no, we're on skype we're on skype, yeah, you're on <clears> skype. <throat> right right and the we skype and once, once he signs out from the skype it's still working yeah Oh, God. Maybe I'll have to join yeah, I remember sometime. having conversations with Renee when the, uh, when the show was over and yeah. we were on Skype. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We talked after you signed off. You know what I've been thinking about doing is challenging uh, 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 Phil, challenging uh, Jack uh, to a trivia contest. <laughs> uh, in, in which um, I would... He would throw a question at me, and I would throw a question at him, but and then he throw a question. He has at me. different trivia than you, you know. Yeah. It's different. Oh, answers. he he, <laughs> he he has different answers exactly. Oh, that's me. Because <laughs> I sit here sometimes, and I'm going. You can moderate, Phil. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, but, but, but I'm saying <laughs> to myself, drink. <laughs> I'm saying to myself, he's wrong about that, you know, and and so I I just, at least he's saying something. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe I should challenge him to a trivia contest, a good old-fashioned trivia contest. 
like the ones I used to have with Roger Ebert in the uh, in Chicago. Yes, Alan. Alan. Well, it's nice if you're muted, Alan. It's nice if you're a silent movie. <laughs> <laughs> you're muted. Now, yeah, you're uh, on. Do you believe in the Snoops way of, of, of finding out if something's real or not? You mean no. Snopes? Snopes. Snopes. Whatever. It's, uh, it's a left wing plant. Is it? Yeah. Oh, oh I, haven't, I haven't heard that, but they said Tucker Carlson did say that. I actually, I was watching Fox News when he said it. They so, had video. I don't know. Maybe they faked so, the video. Wait a minute. Yeah, so, they had video. The video. Wait a minute. Better to wait do. a minute. So Snopes says it's real. Yes. I'll believe Snopes over. But USA Today says it's fake. I will believe Snopes over USA. USA. So would I. US, uh, Snopes is a left wing plant. No, it's you know? not. Bullshit. Are you yeah. kidding me? It's all lefties. Are you no, kidding yeah. me? They, they got an agenda. No, no. no you ask Tucker. Everybody have a drink. Yeah. Ask Tucker. <laughs> Hey, you know what would be nice is can you get him to come on this show? <laughs> call, call him up, say hey, you know, why don't you come I'm still on? alive? Come on over. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have to miss that show. Yeah, I think it would be a great show. You know, they had a rapport. Uh, why not? He did his radio well, show. Uh, he was. Di- I'll tell you. L- let's face it. Tucker's kind of a whore. Well, I'm really encouraging him to come on the show. He's kind of a whore, you know, and he he got let go by MSNBC. Okay. Oh, that's that's tough. Wait a minute, hold on a second. He got let go by MSNBC because I think they were going to go in a certain direction, and mm-hmm. he didn't fit that direction because he was yes to a right winger at the time that I was on his show. However, he was mm-hmm. not out there. Okay, he he basically was a right winger with a certain amount of sensibility. But he, they fired him. They let him go so that they could put in more lefty people because they wanted to be the counter to Fox. So he, he wallowed around for a while, didn't have a job, and then he went over to Fox and they gave him like a weekend or something. One thing led to another, and he got the spot he's in now. Well, he's decided no. he's going for broke on this one. You know, you know why he got that spot? Because everybody else got fired for womenizing uh on on their shows or or uh you know who uh, well uh what's his bill name O'Reilly for bill, O'Reilly. bill o'reilly yeah and uh there were some others no I, I, that I, was I, it no nah, there was more than bill no O'Reilly. they got rid of uh of uh the head of uh five yeah. oh ales ales ales, ales bill o'reilly oh. hey you cut off the head of the snake the rest die right but, <laughs> but uh, nobody else got let go yeah but ales ales and bill o'reilly were pretty big but with Bill O'Reilly gone, that left a big void, and other people kind of moved up uh, the ladder and, and, and got spots. What do you mean? There was only one spot to get, and that was O'Reilly's. Uh, uh, no, because and, they, and that's they, the one, by the way, I think that Tucker Carlson got initially. Yeah. Yeah. He got, he's, he got O'Reilly's spot okay. when O'Reilly was let go. All right. That's, that's but, what happened. But that's it. Well, you're, that's good you're enough. Act, you're they acting like up. you're acting like they got. You know, you would have thought when they got rid of Ailes, Fox would have gotten a little more. They did. What? Huh? They got a little more I mean, warm and fuzzy. I mean, no. When the sons of uh, Murdoch were uh, running it, uh, there was a change. There was even a change in the way the women looked. And you know who they got rid of is that uh, Laura Logan or. Uh, uh, um, Logan? Laura, Laura Logan? Laura yeah, Logan. she's she got way fired. out of left field now. Yeah, mm-hmm. she got fired. Wasn't she over at CBS at one point? She was yeah, at CBS. Yeah, CBS fired her. And then she went to Fox. Yeah. And uh, she, I guess, uh, you know, said some things, and Fox management wasn't happy with it. And she yeah, was out. Tunes. Well, I liked her, and she had nice tits. Well, he was pretty, and that's all. Oh, look, yeah. you know, I got to tell you, the only good thing about OAN are the women. Yeah, they're young. They're all college age. They're all young. Most of their anchors are all young and largely breasted. Is that a nice way of putting it, rather than saying <laughs> biggins or big tits? Biggins. <laughs> because I don't want to be accused of anything here and have it held against me and ruin what career I have left. Well, okay. even when you were popular, you didn't have many women. You were 18 to 35 uh, male uh, was uh, was your top demographic in San Francisco. 
And, uh, you know, I heard he had you out on Polk Street bringing them in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, we, when I helped, it was Fisherman's Wharf. But, uh, you know, the uh, the thing was, uh, you didn't have a big female demographic. Uh, it was uh, 18 to 35 I'm male. I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, my, the, my male, I had a large male audience. Yeah. Yeah. You had a six, uh, mar you had a six share when we were at Camel. And that was a big celebration. I like the way he says we were at Camel. Well, the biggest <laughs> share that I ever got in San Francisco, I Even think, was at KML. KML. Was, what? was at KML. That was the largest yeah, I, right. I had ever had gotten a, in my whole time there. I think you had a 6.0 uh, a a, a 6, six share yeah. uh, uh, in the book. But I managed to maintain like a 5 or something like that. Yeah, which years. is which was uh, fantastic. Well, it made me... The number two showed at KGO in the morning, right. and they were doing and news. And then we find out that KGO's numbers were all cooked. Yep. Ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, they used to prevent me from getting guests Is on my KGO show. KGO, where they have their little repeater. Uh, well, that's why I went to. That's why I went to the com That's why I went to comedians. Yeah. Was because I couldn't get any other guests because they had to do. Their rule was you have to do KGO before you do anybody else. Right. So, uh, it, and I was on in the morning, and they didn't do the guests until after 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So yeah. consequently, there was no way they could, get if, they, if they wanted to do my show, they'd have to stay overnight in San Francisco and then do right. my show the next morning after doing KGO. So that prevented me from having a lot of big name movie guests. So I started going to the comedians. I, was it Mal Sharp's idea uh, that this comedy thing is a big, a big no, deal? No, no. Was it Mal Sharp? No, it just happened by evolution. Oh. You know, I one day somebody said, uh, 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 I want you to have a guest on. I think it was... Was it Slayton? Was, no, I think it was Dr. Gonzo. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, was, was he your first like guest? My, my, my first no. comedy guest, and then he suggested Bobby Slayton. Right. He said, I have this guy who was a big fan of yours in New York, Bobby Slayton. And then so I started having Bobby Slayton on the show. And then I said, do you know anybody? He says, Jeremy Kramer. And before we, Then Kevin Pollack and blah, 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 right. blah, blah, and one after another. Till finally I had all these comedians on the show. And that's how the comedian thing started. It was Kevin what, was dating the sales girl at Camel, right? Was, was he really? I don't know. I don't yeah, remember. what was her name? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember, but, but uh, yeah, he was dating uh, the the girl who was doing uh, you know uh, yeah. vocals fails. Yeah, but yeah, it was uh, it was it was good, you know. And Schwartz, uh, what what was his name? Schwartz uh, was doing uh, you know the the big sales. I, I forgot his first name. I visited him once down in L.A. When Nobody he here cares about any of that, Phil. Yeah. Really. Again, well, it was the camel. Yeah, you're getting to sound like one of those ads for "Don't be like your parents." Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like when they when they say blah blah blah, and he says nobody cares about no, that. I, Alex, <laughs> you know? the time I remember, I don't remember the radio station, but I remember all the billboards on the sides of buses and everything with your picture plastered on it. Yeah, Alex Bennett, all over San Francisco. I don't play no requests. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, that was the first. That was the first. That was the first advertising thing I came up with. The next next one is, nobody likes Alex Bennett. Right. One of the one of the biggest signs I saw was out by the Bay Bridge. One of those big signs. Uh, have you ever told people why you didn't take requests? Because I didn't want to play music. <laughs> well, no, mean. it's not only that, but. You, the music was programmed. Well, the, we no, used to pick yeah, the music yeah. from, well, from what, these college wait, Let me just quickly say this, and then I got to go. But in radio stations would say, okay, it's request time. Send in, you know, call in your requests. <laughs> no <laughs> station did. ever took requests. What happened was... No, they just was, eventually played it. <laughs> they they yeah. would just play a song, and you would think your request had been honored. You know? No, yep. they had a playlist. That was it, you know. And this going out to Joe and Campbell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And it, it was like that, though, Kevin, it, wasn't it? And then there yep. Was, and there was this is for and, little Tony Magno. And there, uh, there was no Joe. Tony's been very quiet tonight, Tony. 
Yeah, I'm just enjoying the conversation. Thank Time you. to send you some more coffee. Yeah. <laughs> send them some black rifle. Hey, Phil, thank you for sticking around tonight. No, Appreciate it. Uh, Kevin, thank you for being here. Alan, mm -hmm. you too. Uh, Charlie Wallace, always good to see you here, Mr. Digital. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what, is there anything to those digits at all? Yes, that's uh, binary for geek. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Jeff, and thanks to Tony. Everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye to you. Okay, there they go, folks. They're starting to hang up on me, so I better hang up on them before they get to me. Yeah, right. Hey, listen, J Jack Bishop is next over most of the same gabnet. He'll be here with the intersection, and uh, he'll be taking your calls on um, uh, Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, right back here, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, folks.